Today we'll model a clock with three arms displaying the seconds, the minutes and the hours and working correctly. It involves a little bit of uh, modeling and an expression which is basically maths but it will be that so simple that everybody will enjoy it. I mean it. Enjoy it. So let's go to the top window for precise modeling. Um, I'm in the curve surfaces world. I could be in the polygon uh, modeling world as well, but let's stick here for a second or maybe longer. Um, let's create the first arm. I use a NURBS plane for that purpose. And uh, the thing is when you scale it up like this to make it really long, a long second arm, and maybe thinner like this. Uh, when you rotate it, it rotates along its center, central axis. That's of course not what what you want. That's why I suggest that uh, you press the insert key. The insert key gives you the pivot and the pivot is the rotation point for example. You could for rotation scaling etc. It works from that point. Now when I move this up and down I could um, move it like here or press the key V and while holding V it snaps to that exactly to that bottom part here. Then I press insert again and then I snap it to the center of the scene uh, by pressing X. X is grid snapping. So when I just move it up it's a smooth movement but when I uh, uh, hold down X it snaps. You see tick 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 and that's where I want to have it. So that's our arms which will display, display the seconds. Okay? Now when I make it smaller like this I scale it from the center which will be the center of our clock. Make it thinner like this. So the next one. In order to um, create the minute arm uh, I could do the same procedure as before but since I've done some effort with the with the pivot already I just duplicate this arm and make it a little bit bigger wider mainly so that's our minute arm and shorter this is the minutes okay now I'll do the same thing with by control D duplicate uh, for the hour arm which is even shorter so I have three arms now for the time that's what they look like in the perspective view I think but I'm not sure actually in uh, in an ordinary analog clock the seconds arm is the highest on the axis and then comes the minutes and down there is the hours arm maybe I'm mistaken you can do some research on it which I have not done let's select the second and actually call it seconds that's a good thing for naming sometimes I'm lazy naming objects individually but uh, here it really makes sense that's the minutes and that's the hours okay let's go to the seconds which is the longest arm of course and here in the main seconds tab I have uh, translate rotate etc things uh, you see these values here they mean I translated this thing in this and that, uh, another direction higher for example uh, I could freeze the transformation so they all get uh, like the scaling instead of seven they all get a zero and one uh, that's good to do and uh, let's select all three of them and go to modify and freeze transformation 
So you see they jump all back. They, they look like they've been made this way. So that's uh, their infancy, so to say. Um, it doesn't re really matter for this, but it's just for, for uh, clarification here. Now, when we rotate this thing by, say, 40 degrees, it goes to the left. That's our second arm, second arm. Uh, we want it to go to the right. So instead of uh, typing in numbers, we could actually actually animate it by setting keyframes here, 40 or minus 40 in so and so many seconds. But uh, of course, this is not precise. So let's go back here. <clears throat> the second arm is in the uh, initial position. Now uh, let's type in here in the Y rotation field equals, that's important, equals and then time and press enter this means that the second arm the arm for the seconds will go th 360 degrees um, in 360 seconds so it goes much too slow because it uh, takes 360 seconds until it makes one whole rotation. So uh, we right mouse click this and we edit the expression. Don't be shocked now. This is a very straightforward window here. Seconds arm, the rotation in Y, we set it to time. First of all, we set it to minus time now because the uh, arm should go the other way around. And now we multiply it by 6 because we want it to speed up and now with multiplying it by 6 it will exactly perform a whole rotation within 60 seconds. And then I press edit and close the window. Now Let's go back to the beginning of the animation. And now you see the second arm behaves naturally. That's how the seconds go. Now for the minutes arm, we will use the rotation of the seconds arm. How do we do that? I mean, the minutes arm goes 60 times slower than the seconds. So uh, after one rotation of the second arm, the minutes arm will go step one unit further. So let's select the seconds and go to the expressions again. That's the arm we've already animated. It's minus time times six. Now let's select seconds rotate y. Okay, and copy it, Control C, and just close it. We won't do anything here. We don't change anything here. Now we go to the minutes arm, into the rotation field, and we type in here equals, and now we paste that expression here, seconds rotate Y, divided by 60, and we press Enter. Now, how does this look like? The seconds arm rotates and you can see that the minutes arm is already moving a little bit because that's the, the hours still stand, uh, stand still. So the minutes go very, very slowly by a factor 60. Now guess what we'll do about the hours. Go to hours and in this field we type in equals then we paste the expression rotate y and of course now it's not divided by 60 but by 60 times 60 which is 3600 and we press enter. Now when we run the animation you see the hour blade is 
rotating very slowly while the minute is rotating faster, obviously. Well, that's the process of creating a clock, an analog clock, which really works precisely with just basically three expressions, which are basically all the same.